Wednesday, and you know what it is on a Wednesday. It's Ricky and Llewellyn. The two elves in the house. How are you doing, Llewellyn? I rock this off. I'm good, thank you. I always rock this. Well, I'm speaking about this, so what happens is that Mindset and Samsung have partnered to bring you an awesome learning hub. So, Llewellyn, you can chill out while I tell the Mindset all about this. I understand. Okay, so Mindset is, if you take care, we have an awesome learning hub for you to please participate. Okay, so I'll just show you what happens is that you have a video and the questions right next to it, so it's very interactive. And if you just scroll, oh, it's not participating with me this thing. Okay, maybe we should start the lesson. How's it doing? It's, it's not. <coughs> it's not reacting to anything. It's not doing. reacting. No. You know, like freezing always happens. Yes. Let's let's see what happens. All right. Let so me start. Yes. Okay. Okay. And then we're gonna go back to that because yes. I promise you now, that's what happens when your brain is packed and you get excited. You know, everybody gets stage fright now and then. Yeah. I've never seen a Samsung do it, but yeah. I promise you, First it's time. brilliant. Yes. First time for everything. <laughs> Today we're gonna have a look at biodiversity. And classification. Now, we've done a couple of things, right? We've learned about biodiversity and all of that, but we need to make sure that we understand it properly, right? Now, when we get to classification, it becomes difficult, right? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep Looney on her toes because I love her. It's not. Oh, come on, Looney. You know what life <laughs> is like. The bear, it's nice when this happens, right? So, what we're going to do in this, this lesson, as soon as I've picked a color, right? Go and we'll use yellow because I love yellow. Right? In this lesson, we can explore biodiversity. And the problem with that is they will not let me go out. I have to stay here. I can imagine this this whole part outside in the open. Right. So I'm gonna do what that Samsung does and freeze and I'm gonna and frozen. Can can we That's all yours. That's why I said freeze. I'm gonna freeze. Yes, freeze, thank you. Oh, you're such an awesome person. Okay, so mindset is what I was saying is that it's a very interactive exam revision program that we have on the Samsung Learning Hub. So you see the video on this side and the notes while the teacher is teaching. So you can press pause, press play, go through your notes, answer the questions. And then what happens is that right at the end, you have your solutions, okay? And then I'll take you through to, this is just the final part. So I'll take you through how you actually get the products on this. So this is your library. This is all the stuff that I've purchased. You see the shelf there and all the stuff that you've purchased. But if you want to get this on your Samsung tablet, this is how you do it. So there's the stores um, button there. You click on that. Let's wait for it. And then you check out the brands, right? There's something written brands there on top and you press that. You look for Mindset Learn, you press on that. And then what happens is that it will show you all the products that you can buy. So I pressed on one, so that's already purchased. So you go back. And then let's click on this one. That's already purchased. Okay, let's look for something down there. <laughs> Come, Looney. Purchase. See, I love, you love okay, this thing, don't there, you? There you go. You see, now you're able to buy this revision. And then what it does is that it shows you the book outline. It shows you what's in the book and what's in the textbook and all of that. So you press buy. And then after you press buy, you will see that it will show you payment options. So what happens is that once you've registered, Samsung will give you a hundred rand voucher to purchase as much goodies on this learning hub as you can. Remember that you can only use your voucher once. So don't just purchase one thing because one product over here costs like eight rand. So make sure you use your hundred rand very eight nicely. Rand. Shop to, yes, yeah, it's so cheap, eh? Like one. And they're going to give you a free voucher of a hundred rand. Yes. So make sure mindset is that you use it to your heart's content until you've used that hundred rand and then you purchase. And then you'll see here on your library all the products that you've purchased like that. So remember, it's only available for smartphones, premium <coughs> smartphones that are Samsung and Samsung tablets, Galaxy tablets. Okay, so don't sweat if you don't have a Galaxy gadget. I mean, it's a bit out there, but I don't have. Don't worry. Sometime during the week or whatever, we will be running a competition where you stand a chance to win all these awesome gadgets because we want to hook you up with Samsung. Remember, Samsung and Mindset, we have fantastic content meets fantastic technology. That's all for me. That was good. <laughs> I'm impressed. Hey, I'm impressed. You know, the nicest thing I like about that is if you're giving an answer, you can see somebody teaching. If you don't, if you put an answer down and you don't agree with a memo, you can see that person teaching. How cool is that? That is very nice. Awesome. You'll always get the answer. Now, 
let's carry on with this with, with this lesson, right? We we're gonna have a look at the biodiversity, and then we're gonna have a look and examine and apply. In other words, we're gonna show you how to use it. Classification. It's this big word, right? Classification, which is quite cool, right? So let's jump into the thick of things. Very simple, very easy. Okay. Definitions. Remember what I say about definitions. Very, very important. The first 50 marks of your exams is about definitions. Don't forget it. Right? So here we go. Biodiversity. There it is. We want to know what it is. It's a simple, simple thing. Let's have a look. Right? It's a wide range of species. Wide range of species. Okay? Wide range of species and the number of organisms making up each, okay, so each individual species within a community. <coughs> now I'm using these big words, right? Species, community, uh, organism, ooh, whoa, hold on, back it up slightly, right? Organism, I'm an organism, so we're cool with that, okay? Species, what is a species? That's what we've got to figure out. And then we have to look at what a community is. Now, a species is something that can freely interbreed, right? It's the same, it's a group of things that can freely interbreed. In other words, wildebeest and wildebeest, okay? Okay, so wildebeest is a species, cool? And then a community, right? Try this, I have a community at my house, right? I've got humans, right? I've got cats, right? And I've got dogs, and I've got birds. So. It's a whole community. There's all different species in a specific community. Right, so that's how it is. There's a lot of biodiversity at my house. Okay, now, if I have a look, <coughs> I've got a couple of pictures here which are going to make things nice and easy. Let's have a look. We've got a beautiful flag. Can you see in the corner there? Right, which is an animal. Yes, we've got a single-celled organism. So, most probably an amoeba. Right, then we've got a mushroom which is a fungus, and we've got a fern, which is the body. Nice, simple, easy. Please, please remember that a fern and a fungus almost looks like plants. They're not. One of them isn't, but it almost looks like plants, and the top two are animals. Right, they look like animals, but they, one is not one. Please, be with me now, okay? I'm not trying to confuse you, but you must understand where I'm coming from, and I'll explain it in a few seconds again. Right, now... Let's go. Special words. Species, diversity. Species, I've told you what a species is. And diversity is different types. Okay, so let's have a look. Various of different species. Simple, basic, easy. Okay, let's have a look at what we have here. Okay, I've got some nice pictures. Have a look at that. I've got a polar bear on there. Okay, that's a type of species, a polar bear. Then you get a Bengal tiger, right? different type of species. Then you get a silverback gorilla. Hopefully it's a silverback gorilla. What do you think, Lily? Do you think it's a silverback gorilla? Which one? This one here. Silverback gorilla? Uh, I think it's a, it's a beautiful, it's like King Kong type of thing, right? It's a beautiful yeah. animal, right? Then I've got a butterfly, graceful and gorgeous. Hey, Lily? Yes. Graceful and gorgeous. Then I've got tuna, a fish, right? Tuna. Then I've got a turtle, right? Turtle. I've got a walrus, yes, I've got penguins, I've got a, what do you think that is? It's a, a panda. A panda bear. Yes. And then I've got this funny thing over here. What do you think that is? Uh, you would need to speak yeah. out about this. Right? Yeah. That there is my wife's favorite thing. Oh, is it an anteater? Yeah, it's not an anteater. It's in the water. In the water, oh, I can see. <laughs> it's a big animal. And Hippo. that's uh, it's another Hippo. name of the water bird. That's a, it's a hippo, very nice. Each one of these is different species, so it's diversity. Now, if you could close your eyes, let me just do it for two seconds. Close your eyes and just think with me. I'm going to get really close your eyes. Now, come here, stick with me. <laughs> Quick, okay. I'm going to count to ten, and I want you to try and picture as many different animals as you possibly can. I reckon I got about 70. 70? 70 different animals. I mean, I'm thinking about ants, right? I'm 
I'm thinking about cockroaches, right? I'm thinking about birds, right? All different birds. Can you get where I'm coming from? It is beautiful. We are so blessed in this country, okay? We have the biggest diversity, what we all could want, okay? That is awesome. Next thing we're going to have a look at is genetic diversity. Now, hold on, genetic diversity. Let's have a look what genetic diversity is. And we're not going to show you pictures, but have a look down here at the bottom of the page. Genetic variations within a species. <coughs> Come, Looney, what do you think it is? Genetic diversity, right? It's a variation in the same species. What do you think? Come on, give me the best answer you can. Okay. Yes, <laughs> come on, think about it. Genetic diversity. What is your favorite animal? Dog. A dog. Right, now, give me genetically different things between dogs. Well, you've got different breeds. You've got different breeds, yeah. Yes. So let's take the same breed. Okay. The same breed, what is your favorite dog? Cocker Spaniel. A Cocker Spaniel. What type of Cocker Spaniels do you get? Sure. Ah, and you get different types as well. They, you've got ones, but they all have broad ears. Oh, they all have broad ears. But they also have kind of like that fluffy hair. Oh, well, we could have, have it where the different, cut, not different colors, colors, but you can have, for example, I have a Great Dane, big black Great Danes. You get the, the, the big, it looks like um, like stone Great Danes, and then you get the white ones. Oh, you okay. get all different types. Yeah. And that there is genetic variation, okay? Different species, as well, different dogs, but they're different types of dogs. So, we're cool. They can interbreed. Remember, species can interbreed. So, all dogs can interbreed, right? Yes. You can breed a husky with an Alsatian, can't you? Yes. I see. They can interbreed, and we're going to have difference between them. The genetic makeup of that one is different. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? The genes are different. It's quite cool. Right. So, there we go. <coughs> genetic diversity. Cool. Look at that. Can you see what I was saying? Look at the difference. What are those? Can you, can you tell me what those are? Those are rotties, okay? They are you what? Rottweilers. Oh, It's a yes. Rottweiler. Look at that. Now, look at the difference between the two. One is, let's say, let's say, one is a high jump. Flip, pretty. It walks around like a very footballer style. It's a beautiful high jump. The other one is a bouncer. And you've all heard of bounces in a club. You know those bounces in a club? They walk around like that. Like <laughs> okay? That's what it is. Okay? So, but they both are Rottweilers. Okay? How cool is that? Sometimes they can even come from the same mom and dad. It changes. Okay? How cool is that? One you get very thin, one you get very big. Okay? That is genetic diversity. Does it apply? It does apply with human sex. Oh, yes. Of course. Because I was just about to say. Okay? Because we've always got something different between us. That's what makes humans different. Then, ecosystem diversity. Ecosystem diversity. What is an ecosystem? Well, let's have a look. Variety of the ecosystem that occurs in a, speci uh, a specific area. Ecosystem, right? It's where, let me pull this down so you can see what I'm talking about. Let me explain it. What happens is in an ecosystem, you've got a specific place, right? Where everything's living. So you've got, for example, Famous, right? And certain things live there, and you've got your forest areas. It's different ecosystems, and they're all different from each other, right? So you've got famous, you've got this, you've got that, you've got deserts, you've got all these different things. It makes us so special. We've got the biggest uh, variety of that, hey, in this country, which is cool. And then the last thing I'm going to show you, right, if you're doing it down here, is endemic. Endemic means it's for the specific place, okay? So let's have a look. Species that occur in one country or region which is indigenous, right? And nowhere else. So let's see. That's what I was talking about. Look at this. We have, which you've done. We've got the forest areas, right? You've got the fainbos, which is in the yellow, right here at the bottom. You've got the grasslands, which is over there. You've got the Namib Karoo. I mean, this is our country. You look how much different things we've got. How cool is that? Okay? I mean, you drive from here to Cape Town. And you've gone through all different places. What more could we want? Okay? That is absolutely fantastic. Now, oh wait, I want to show you something spectacular about me, if I'm not mistaken. Where are we going? Oh no, let's do the next page. Do the next page. Go with me. We're gonna talk, especially now, quickly. Hey,
out. Diver uh, bi biodiversity in Africa. Right? And the main ones we're going to look at. Okay, here it is. Is the biodiversity hotspots, the ones that are important, that the people overseas come to visit. Okay? And they are the Cape Floral Gym. Simple. The succulent karoo. Okay? And then Maputo. Okay. That's what it is. And let's have a look if we can find them. Yeah, that's where they found it. Right, they all cool. We've got this side, and that side here is Maputu, that part there. This one is the Cape, right? Suc uh, uh, Fainbos, and then you get your succulent kudus up here. They come and visit that all the time. It brings, makes this world fantastic. Well, South Africa is fantastic. It brings in a lot of money, and everything works so nicely. And look at that. That comes from the Cape Fainbos, right? There we go. Have a look at the succulent karoo which is this one here, and if we carry on going, look at that. This is the, sorry, let's go down. This is the, I think it is, Maputu. How cool is that? Okay, it's so beautiful. What more could we do? So, what I'm going to do is, while we stand in here, right, I'm speaking like it's going out of fashion. I'm still so excited about it, Samson, aren't you really? Yeah, right. excited. So what I think you should do, Jump up and down, right? Give a good stretch, right? And I'll see you straight after this break. Okay, cool. Mine sessions, we are going to take a very short break. Before we do, I forgot to tell you, I was so excited about the Samsung things that are happening here. Facebook, hit us up on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Glen Extra. On Twitter, our handle is at Glen Extra. Remember, you can download the show notes, the videos, and everything awesome about Mindset on learnextra.co.za forward slash live. So with all that, let's take a break and we'll see you straight after this. from that break. Just another thing about that Samsung tablet. Remember guys, the content on the Learning Hub is updated on a daily basis. So you're able to access everything that we have, all the exam revision stuff that we have going on, on a daily basis. So there's new content being uploaded there on that Samsung tablet. So make sure you go check that thing out. It's so awesome. Do you want to get it in here? No, I definitely do actually. <laughs> right, so, so get one of those. It's going to help you. Yes. Definitely. Which makes me I'll be busy all the time. What more could you do? Right. Next thing we're going to have a look at, of course, try this out, is classification of organisms. <laughs> now, people struggle with this section a lot. They really do, right? It's not, it's difficult, but it's not. Okay? The nice thing about it is they're not going to ask you big questions about it. They're going to ask you some questions, but it's not going to be too difficult. So let's have a look at what type of questions they will ask you. After I explain it to you. Okay, firstly, we're going to have a look at classification. What is it? It is sorting things out. Okay, so let's have a look. It's sorting and grouping according to similarities and differences. Okay, it's grouping according to similarities and differences. So, let's say um, all schools, houses. They're all similar, so they schools. But each school is different because they wear a certain uniform. How nice is that? I think that's a cool way of looking at it. Simple. So that's that school, that's that school, that's that school. But they're all schools. Cool. Let's see how I got, got to that because that's going to make it more, more easier to understand. Right, so here we go. We first got to look at taxonomy. That is a big word. Taxonomy. Taxonomy. Taxonomy is the way we start doing this group. Okay, so here we say, it's the science of naming and classifying a wide range of living things. Okay, that's what it's called. Taxonomy is where you classify and put them into their groups. Okay, please, please remember this while I'm doing this, right? And you guys see this. Make sure you take take those notes because that's very important. I'm trying to put it into words that you can understand. Right? So, <laughs> next thing. This man, Carl. Carlos, right? Carlos, my, my friend. I'm not married. Right? Carlos, right? Linear. There he is. He divided all living things into certain groups. Okay? 
So he took them and said, hold on a minute. It's, it's a little bit difficult. We need to put them into groups. What is the most similar things? So this group's going to go there, that group's going to go there, that group is going to go there. And he did that just to make it easier. So it's, it's the difference between, let's say, um, shoes, pants, and shirt. Right. All the shoes, it doesn't matter what color, what foot, what anything, all the shoes are going there. Then we've got all the pants going there. Then we've got all the shirts going there. That's how we started off, right? So what he did was he divided all living things into two kingdoms. Okay, two kingdoms. That's how he started off. The two main kingdoms. The king took the whole. Okay, very simple. It was plants and animals. That's what we see. Plants and animals. I, I walk outside. Am I right, Luke? You walk outside, you see a bird flying. There goes an animal. You see a tree, that is, a, that is a, a plant, right? And remember, I said to you right in the beginning, you have those stools, they're called mushrooms, okay? It looks like a plant, it grows out of the ground, it doesn't pick up and run off, does it? It stays there, it doesn't move, it's a plant, that's what we thought. So that's how he classified it, he put it as a plant. Now, he did this whole section, okay? He also developed the binomial system. Okay, here we go. The binomial system of naming. And naming of certain organisms. And this is how we do it, right? Each organism, he said, each organism has got to have two groups, right? Now, if you think about it, I have my name, my main name. And then I've got a name site, a nickname, right? So let's see. Looney. My main name is Llewellyn, right? Llewellyn, that's big, solid, strong. That's my main name. Looney, what is my nickname? Lou. Lou, there we go. So I've got Lou and my big name. Because if I'm gonna, if Looney's going to say, it's the Looney and Llewellyn show, you're all going to go, whoa, 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 hold on. The, the last name, what's Lou? Right? All right. So it's Lou. It's a nickname. So that's how we classified it. First thing he did was he said all organisms have two names, right? It is a generic name and a specific name. In my case, generic Lou, specific Llewellyn. Right, so that's how we saw it. For example, we've got humans. If you look at humans, we are called Homo sapiens. Homo sapiens. Okay, we are hominids. Homo sapiens. That is our specific name, right? So there it is. Specific name, Homo sapiens. And what is our generic name or our nickname is? Human. There we go. If you have a look at the ne next one, it's Pantherolea, which is your lions, right? Then you've got your Panthero uh, tigris, which is your tigers. Nice, simple, easy. Now, Okay? But they're showing you how we came to what we have today, which is very, very important. Okay? Now, in modern life science, modern life science, this, this thing here is the most important thing. In modern life science, we have added things to it. We've made it a bit more easier to understand. It might look more difficult, but it's actually a little bit more easier. So you can put things into specific places, right? So, for example, we have additional categories based on their, like this, based on their shared physical properties. So what they look like, right? So let's have a look. We have each group. So scientists said, okay, these all have green leaves, right? So if they've got green leaves, then we need to put them somewhere. But this thing that, that's got this helmet on is white. Uh -uh, something is white. Okay, why is it white? Why is it not, not green? Let's have a look at it. Maybe we must put it one side and keep it there for a few minutes and then we see what happens, right? So, what they did was, the scientists attempted to classify organisms based on their shared features as information to increase or make it easier to classify specific things. Okay, now, let's have a look at this. The classification becomes very easy if you listen to it very carefully. Now, here we go. 
the categories that they've put them into. Okay? Categories they've put them into. It's your kingdom. There it is. I'm going to put it under here. Well, I'll underline for you. It's the kingdom, the phylum, the class, the order, the family, the genus, and the species. Okay? Now, you need to know that quite well. That's how they're going to ask you. How do they classify? You've got to know that book by heart. Right? And a good thing at the end is to say, so write this down. Okay? Because this is quite a cool thing. King Philip. Okay? King Philip crossed over. So King Philip crossed over for gold and silver. So it is. Kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Do you all get that? King Philip crossed over for gold and silver. You need to write that down. It's very, very important so that you can remember the order of this stuff. Right. Now, we can use the system to classify humans. So us, humans. So listen carefully how we do this. Okay. This is quite cool. We are in each kingdom. There's five kingdoms. Monera, Protista, Animals, Plantea, and Mammalia. Did you get it? Protista. I'm not even lying. I remember them all by heart. I don't <laughs> want to use the same one. It's okay. I'm going to be missing one. I'm going to give one up. Animal, Animalia, Plantista, um, Fungus, right? So Fungus. Uh, your protista, and there's one more. I want to know what it is. I hope my dad will say what is the first one. I don't, don't remember anything funky. That's why I'm worried. <laughs> right? <laughs> Let's have a look. The animal kingdom. Right? We are in an animal kingdom. We're in the animalia kingdom. Then, right, our phylum is chordata. Right? Chordata. Now, let's get this right. Looney. She looks like she's sort of sitting and getting ready. Come, come here. Yeah. <laughs> Gorgeous woman. Right, so, animal. She's an animal, even though she thinks she is. Right? <laughs> she's an animal, same as me. Okay. okay, that's our kingdom. We belong in that kingdom. Then, they said, Cordata. What does that mean? Dirt. This thing running down here makes her a Cordata. What is this? My spine. Your spine. It's your spinal cord making you a Cordata. Then, Next one, mammals, okay, mammal, now what does a mammal mean, okay, what does a mammal say, mammal is so warm, she's warm, she doesn't have to go lie in the sun to bathe to get energy, otherwise you guys would never get up in the morning, can you imagine these kids, they'd be lying there next, next to the pool or wherever just to suck up that sun to get moving, right, yeah. then, this is the part. Primate is the order. What is a primate? Give me another name of a primate. Think about it. Silverback. Oh, the gorilla. Ah, the gorilla is the primate. They've also got the, yeah, tongue twister. They've also got the five phalanges in there, right? So it's quite cool. They're part of us. So we come from them. Then they hominids. Remember I said we hominids. We homo. We are homo sapiens. Okay, then we've got Homo, which is our genus, Homo sapiens, right? Well, Homo and our species, sapiens. So we are classified, our species is sapiens. sapiens. Our thing is sapiens, not us. Nice. So anybody walks past you and goes, who do you think you are? You say, sapien. I'm a sapien. <laughs> Sounds bad, but it's perfect. <laughs> Thanks, Lou. Yeah. Right, so that is perfect. That's exactly what you want. Sapiens. So we've just classified humans perfectly. And you've heard of all these names. You've heard of Animalia. You've heard of Cordata. You've heard of mammals. You've heard of primates. Hominids, maybe not. Homo, you definitely have heard of because we're talking about Homo sapiens. And sapiens is next. Okay? So when we talk about Homo sapiens, we're joining in the genus and the species in one. That's very cool. Now, that whole part there is humans. Right. Now, the kingdoms that we have, 
Okay, Looney, is there anybody that's given an answer yet? No. Nobody yet. Okay, that's why I'm here. You slut. Right, <laughs> here we go. First one. We've got the Monera Kingdom. The Monera Kingdom, right? And that is a specific animal. I'm going to explain which, which now. Right? Oh, the yeah, trust. Hey? Trust. Trust. Yes. What did you say? Monera. Monera. Very yes. nice. Then we got the Protista. Right. Then we've got the fungi. Right. How many is that? Three. I know five. There's two left. The two that I haven't mentioned that we see all the time. It is your Plantea and your Animalia kingdoms. Okay, so there they are. Look at it again. Monera, Protista, fungi, um, Plantea, and Animalia kingdoms. Okay, they are your five kingdoms. That's the most important things they're going to ask you. They're always going to ask you that. Right. Now, One era. One era is normally your bacteria, right? The smallest living organisms, simple, I'm going to go through this with you so you see. Smallest living organisms, they're unicellular. Uni meaning one, one cell. They're unicellular, right? Then they prokaryotic. Now, that sounds like a very strange word, prokaryotic. It means they do not have a u- nucleus. Prokaryotic is that should make some difference when you get to the others. Right? Then, mostly are heterotrophic. Hetero, think about it too. I want to know what heterotrophic is. Send it to me if you use this one. Cool. And this is what they look like. Okay? How cool is that? You're going to know how to draw these things once you know. So, concentrate carefully. Okay? That is your protista. And look what it looks like. It's quite cool, hey? Once again... Okay, oh, sorry, your monera, your bacteria, there they are. Can you see them? Now, next part, no, next, next kingdom is your protista kingdom. Your protista kingdom is eukaryotic. You, as in, if you look at these, this is a very easy way to do it. Pro and eukaryotic. Pro, something's missing. You, as in you, sitting right there. You have a u- nucleus, right? So, eukaryotic, I have a nucleus got in my cells. So it's got a nu- nucleus, it's unicellular and multicellular. It's not just one, it could be two, or three, or four, or five cells, but they're also made in one, right? Then you've got the autotrophic, the heterotrophic, and the parasitic. Okay, and let's have a look how gorgeous they are. Okay, you've got your seaweed over there. Can you see all the different animals that come from this one? Now, that is just the quick kingdoms. This one is the fungi, okay? The heterotrophic, parasitic, and saprophytic, uni and multi, right? Have a good look at them. Bread mold, yeah, it's your fungus that I was talking about, right? Oh, look at those. Those are beautiful. Ringworm, okay? That's your human. Next one. I'll try and get through this before we move on to the next section. Plantea, of course, they're divided into two. You've got your, your, um, what are they called now? Come on, help me out. They are your vascular system, your non-vascular plants. Okay, let's have a look. They're always green. They're autotrophs, divided into two sections, vascular and non-vascular plants, right? Your non-vascular is your moss, and of course, you get your va- vascular, which is your tree and all of those plants, which is po- uh, seed-bearing and non-seed-bearing. Okay, and then the last one that I want to have a look at is your animal kingdom. They don't have a cell wall. Right, they can be a lot of different things. Okay, but I rushed you back for a specific reason. You need a break. I need a break. And then we'll come back and we'll show you how to use these things. Right. All right. Mine says we are going to take a short break. I have posted the notes on our Facebook page, so go check them out. Facebook.com forward slash learn extra is our Facebook page, and I'll see you straight after this break. from the very short break. I just saw a comment here, I think it's from Lazola, and he's asking why he should master the most because he wants to pass life sciences with a distinction. While you and I both said everything. Just know all your work, study, and you will be good to go for the rest of your life with your final exams. And my teacher, remember, it is the final lap. It's the last lap 
how this race out of grade 10 is ready for your final exams because I want to be calling you grade 11s next year, not grade 10s because we must all pass and you must all pass with A's because we're here for you always. So with all that, mm -hmm. guys, it's very simple to pass. You want to know how to do it? Definitions. I've always said definitions. And life science only becomes interesting once you start enjoying it. And enjoying it is not just sitting behind a book and putting your head in and going like this. It is literally go out and find the funny. So if we're talking about the funny books, find a way to go and see them. That's the way to get there. Right, my right people. Okay. Go out there, look, and enjoy. I promise you, you'll do so much better. Right, <coughs> now, I promise you to tell you how we use classifications. Yes. Before you start, he asked something about heterotrophy. Hetero what is heterotrophics? Yes. yes. And Tammy, Sarah, Tammy and Sarah have definitions. Okay. Let me hear Tammy you. says there are animals that can't produce their own food. And Sarah also says there are animals that cannot produce their own food and depend on others. Oh, nice. So you get your autotrophs, which are plants, right? The plants make their own food. And a heterotroph is that big, beautiful cow that comes around and eats it. That is a head tetra trip. Right. Okay. That's very good. I'm Thanks. impressed. Well done. Tell nice. Me answer that. High five. <laughs> High five. <laughs> now, <laughs> this is what we do. It's called a dicotinous key. In other words, it's a big German name. It's not a big German name. It's just a name. Dicotinous key. What we're going to do is we're going to find the answer by looking at specific questions. Now, these are quite cool. These are not, I love these. Because you can hard, hardly go wrong with them. You just got to concentrate on the overall point. For example, if we have a look at it, it's a system that can be used to identify specific species by looking at their different characteristics or their different things that are different or that are characterizing them, right? Sorry, that word just really come out. And you're going to put them into specific categories, right? This key may be numbers or, so it may be numbers, or it may be branches. Branches. Wow. Having branches. Uh -oh. I hope Looney's got a fitted cap on because I'm going to be asking her a lot of questions. She's going to love this. And you know that Looney loves life science. So <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to make her answer some questions. But before she answers, I want you to write it down as well. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Use the key below to classify, here we go, a kangaroo, that's the one, okay, a cow, there's the second one, so that's one, that's two, we're going to go to the third one, which is a bee, right, you know that thing that makes honey, right, see, I'll go all the way to four, that's not a good sign, right, a bee, which is three, and we've got a spider, which is four, that's all, don't be thinking, right. Let me show you how to do this. I'm going to bring this up. Okay. They've got different questions. And all you've got to do is follow the questions. Let me show you how easy and simple this actually is. Okay. Now, number one. They've got 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, 3A, 3B. You get where I'm coming from. Let's go to number one, A. Firstly, it says, an internal skeleton. Does it have an internal skeleton? Okay. Does a kangaroo have an internal skeleton? Luni, do you know what a kangaroo is? Um, yes, it jumps. It's a marsupial. <laughs> it's in Australia. It's got a pouch, pouch and yes. it's got a long tail. And they say they box. Have you they seen them? They jump and they kick like this and attack. Right. They are a pest in Australia. They bite. Right. Oh, they, they just get over them. No, but they're bigger, they're bigger people. Yeah. Than they do, right? So, the kangaroo, does it have an internal skeleton? Does it have, like, I've got a bone on the inside? No. Cool. So, it, can it be, can 1A be a kangaroo? It's a yes. No, it can't. Internal, sorry, internal skeleton, you're right. Yes. Does a cow have one? Yes. Does a bee have one? Does a bee have a bone on the inside? Or does it have a hard shell on the outside? A bee. A bee. Shell, maybe. Hard shell, very yes. nice. And a spider? Yeah. 
hard shell. Hard shell, very nice. So, if you are these two, we need to go to number two. Right, so we need to go here if you are a cow or a kangaroo. Okay. If you are not, which question is next? That's it. It is a no internal skeleton. So, if they have a no internal skeleton, you got to go to question three. So let's have a look at this. First of all, this one will be a B. So I'm going to put a B there, and a S for spider. Right. There we go. We happy with that? Yes. You happy with that, Looney? Yes. And this one, we can raise this piece. It is. It's got um, two A. I need to go to two A, which is a kangaroo or. Then it says 2A. Pouch present. Does it have a pouch? Yes. Yes. So it's got a pouch present. So if it's got a pouch present, does a cow have a pouch? No. No pouch. It's, it's where something you put something in for safety. Right? And a kangaroo puts its bacon inside it for safety. Now, you know a cow's got a bacon. You know those bacon tips that we get our box from, right? If it had a pouch. Do you not think she'd put that away for safekeeping for later? <laughs> yeah, <Right>? maybe. <laughs> Definitely. But no, they hang out there, so there's no pouch, right? So, pouch present is a kangaroo. kangaroo. There, I'm going to put a mouse big K for kangaroo. Cool, right? Pouch absent. This is a cow, am I right? Cow, there we go. Okay, so it's a cow and a kangaroo. We're happy with that. <laughs> then it says, we need to go to question three. Question three, there we go. Six legs. Now, does a bee have six legs? Does a bee have six legs? Six. Six legs. Does a, does a spider have six legs? See how it's working out. Now, I want you to close your eyes. Close your eyes for a second. And I want you to think of a big tarantula spider, right? And you see those hairy arms coming out, and it goes down. Is there three arms on the left? What do you think, Uni? Spiders have eight legs. Spiders have eight legs. Okay. So, six legs. Is that a spider? No. No, it's a bee. Right? And it doesn't have six legs. In other words, it's got seven, eight, nine, ten, or one, two, three, four. It could be a... What's, spider. what's left? A spider. A spider. Very nice. So, if I have a look at it. It has a pouch. It's a kangaroo. Right? It does not have a pouch, it's a cow. If it's got six legs, it's a bee. If it doesn't have six legs, it is a spider. Now that is just using numbers. Let's have a look at the other one, the branches. Okay, now I'm going to move this up so we can see the whole screen. Animals below, we're looking at, same thing, kangaroos, bees, cows, and spiders. They can be divided into two sections. Here it is. Skeleton, no skeleton. Or, sorry, external skeleton, internal skeleton. You can see it very easily. Have you any? The bees and the spider's got an external skeleton, and the cow and the kangaroo's got an internal skeleton. Cool. So we've got that all sorted out. Right? Then it's how many legs? Six legs, or more or less than six eggs, of legs. And here, pouch, no pouch. See, it's fairly simple. Can use this system to do it. So that is very cool. That is actually called a diacotyle scheme. Now, this one here that I showed you is the one that they use most of the time. Now, the thing about a diacotyle scheme is that, that that one's quite easy. It becomes very thick and you just have to use your head and specific things. Right? So, what I've done is I've got a big line screen. Okay? And I'm going to take it slow. Guys can answer it and figure it out. Okay, so stay with me. Here we go. Here's the next question. Use the key below to classify the following organisms. Okay. Now, can anybody tell me what the name of this fish is? Or this one? Or this one? Or what? Any one of them. Okay. Yes, let me let me throw one out. I think this is a stingray. Okay, it's a stingray. 
That's how I see it. But what titles do they want to give? Okay, they want to know the titles. Be good. So let's go to the Diakotes team and we follow it step by step. Okay, so let's see. Number one. If fish shape is long, okay, if the fish shape is long and skinny, long and skinny, then go to step two. If the fish shape is not long and skinny, please go to step three. So let's see. Let's go back up. This one, long or skinny? L uh, 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 long and skinny or fat and not, not skinny? That's fat and skinny. I think that's what it says, right? Not long and skinny. I'm going to go fat and skinny. Right? This one is fat. Right? It's not skinny. That's fat. That's fat. That's fat. Fat. Hold on. What's this one? Really? What do you think this is? Skinny or fat? That's a skinny. This one is a fat one, and that one's a skinny one. Am I cool? Right, so I would say that that is skinny, and that is skinny. Yes, we have to do that. Simple and easy. Now, all the rest need to go to question three. But the two that we are talking about need to go to question three. All of these that are not skinny need to go to question three. The ones that are skinny need to go to question two. Cool. So let's have a look at that. Question two. If the fish has pointed fins, right, it is a trumpet fish. If it has smooth fins, it is a spotted moray eel. Now let's have a look at this. Let's have a look at the picture. Okay, here. This here has a smooth fin. It goes up and it goes across and then round and then that's what its fin looks like, nice and smooth. This one has got, it does this. There it is. It's got these funny shaped, hard, simple fins, right? Which means that one is, let's have a look, pointed fins. It's got a pointed fin. Can you see how nice and pointy the fins are? You see all the points? And that one's got a smooth one. So, this is a trumpet fish, right? And this is a spotted moray eel. There we go. Are you happy with that? Did you get it? Was that easy? Cool. So now we've got those two. That one's done. That one's done. Simple. Remember, if it's fat and not skinny, well, fat meaning short, stumpy, you need to go to question three. Right. So let's have a look at question three. A fish has both eyes on the top of its head then go to question four. If the eyes are on the side of the fish, go to section five. Okay. Now, where are the eyes? Okay. And the eyes are simple. Let's, let me have a look at this. I don't know where this one's eyes are. I can't see it. But I know this one's got an eye here. Look at the eyes. Can you see the eyes there? Right? I can see the eyes there. Yes? I can see the eyes there. Yes? I don't know where those ones are. So I definitely can see the eyes there. There it is. And I can see the eyes there. Those two I'm a little bit worried about. Let's have a look. Okay, so I'm going to leave that question. If it says there, if the fish has eyes on the side, go to step five. And I'm going to do the eye thing first, right? I'm going to say the side eyes because I don't know which one it is. The ones I can see, some I can't, and it's a bit confusing. So let's go to question five rather. Leave question four out. If the fish has spots, then go to step six. If the fish does not have spots, then go to question seven. Let's see. That's got spots, right? Yeah. That one's got spots. There's one, two, three spots, right? This one's got spots. That one doesn't. That one's got stripes. Okay, so the two that's got spots is that one, that one, and that one. Am I right? Yes? Okay, cool. Let's see. We'll go to question six for that. If the fish has chains. Hold on. In other words, whiskers. It is then a spotted goat fish. Hold on. Well, what, what's this here? Huh? It's got fins, so it's spotted, um, spotted fish or whatever. Spotted, I'm just going to put a goat fish actually. Then you've got the next one, which is, it does not have, it's a tail fin. Now, it's between those, those two. But that's definitely got an eye, so it must, must be that one. Go to the next one. 
If the fish has stripes, we go to question eight. Let's see. Stripes, 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 stripes. There's stripes. Oh, there's stripes. No other person. Oh, there's a bit of stripes. Can you see what I'm doing? All I'm doing is I'm following over and over and over again. Right. So, what I think. I'm hoping I've helped, helped you out here. Right? You guys must go and enjoy it. Hopefully I'll see you again next week. Tune in at the last session of the week. And um, I'll see you again next week. All right. My sessions, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you to Ruth for bringing us this great lesson. Everything of the best with your final exams. Remember, we want you to pass with flying colors. We love you very much. And we'll see you same time, same place next week. Goodbye from us.